Hi everybody, this is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack, and in this podcast we're continuing on with the cardiovascular system, the blood, with our focus on blood cell formation. Most blood cells must be constantly replaced because of their, on average, short lifespan, with most surviving for a few hours, days, or weeks. The number of red blood cells and platelets in the bloodstream stays fairly constant and is maintained through negative feedback systems. In contrast, the number of white blood cells varies by type and is strongly influenced by the presence of pathogens inside the body. All of the blood's formed elements are produced in a process called hemopoiesis, also called hematopoiesis. The suffix poiesis means making of. It begins during embryo development in the embryo's yolk sac and then extends blood cell formation into the liver, spleen, thymus, lymph nodes, and then finally the red bone marrow. After birth and through the rest of one's life, the red bone marrow is the sole source of new blood cell production. We know from our study of the skeletal system that red bone marrow is located in the microscopic spaces in spongy bone tissue and is generously supplied with a high concentration of blood vessels. There are swollen and leaky capillaries called sinuses around the red bone marrow cells, which help transport the newly made blood cells into the bloodstream. A very small percentage from 0.05 to 0.1% of red bone marrow cells are called pluripotent stem cells. These cells have the potential to divide and differentiate into many different kinds of cells. The prefix pluri means multiple. These cells can include any of the various blood cells, but also they can form adipocytes, osteoblasts, chondroblasts, and muscle cells. The pluripotent stem cells can produce two other types of stem cells, myeloid stem cells and lymphoid stem cells. As seen in this flowchart of hemopoiesis, the myeloid stem cells and lymphoid stem cells can further differentiate into all of the various mature blood cells. Most of the blood cells, including the red blood cells, the platelets, the monocytes, the neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils originate from the myeloid stem cells. The myeloid stem cells begin and end their development in the red bone marrow. The lymphoid stem cells go on to produce the remainder of the blood cells, including the different types of lymphocytes, such as the T lymphocytes, and B lymphocytes, commonly called the T cells and B cells, as well as the natural killer or NK cells. The lymphoid stem cells begin differentiating in the red bone marrow, but finish their development in lymphatic tissues. As hemopoiesis gets underway, some myeloid and lymphoid stem cells differentiate directly into types of cells called blasts or precursor cells. More on these cells in a little bit. Other myeloid stem cells differentiate into cells called progenitor cells, which are unable to continue dividing. Some progenitor cells are called colony forming units or CFUs. These are shown in the flowchart in the green boxes. These cells go on to produce specific types of mature blood cells. For example, CFUE produces red blood cells, or erythrocytes. The CFU MEGs are producing the megakaryocytes, which go on to form the platelets. And the CFU GMs produce the granulocyte white blood cells. That's the G in the GM, such as the neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils, as well as the monocytes and their products, the macrophages, which is the M in the GM. 
These are examples of agranular white blood cells. We will discuss the classification, structure, and function of the white blood cells in a later podcast. All of the myeloid stem cells and lymphoid stem cells ultimately differentiate into precursor cells, which we also call blasts, that will go on to directly become the mature blood cells. The blasts are shown in blue here on the flowchart. All of the precursor cells end in the suffix blast, which means to grow or build. We've seen this term before with the word osteoblast back in the bone tissue chapter. For example, the proerythroblasts develop into the erythrocytes. The basophilic myeloblasts become the basophils. The B lymphoblasts become the B lymphocytes, and so on. There is a group of hormones called hemopoietic growth factors that influence the division and differentiation of some of the progenitor cells. Erythropoietin, or EPO, is a hormone secreted by the kidney that helps raise the number of red blood cell precursors. Another hormone called thrombopoietin, or TPO, is produced by the liver and triggers the fragmentation of the megakaryocyte into platelets. Cytokines are glycoproteins that act as local hormones and are secreted by the red bone marrow, white blood cells, fibroblasts, and endothelial cells lining the blood vessels. There are two groups of cytokines, the colony stimulating factors, or CSFs, and the interleukins, which trigger white blood cell production. Cytokines play a role in influencing the division of progenitor cells in the red bone marrow and are involved in the regulation of various phagocyte and lymphocyte activities.